here we go. So Venus being um, the planet of love, and we're going to talk about Uranus. It is an energy that you can tap into um, for healing because love is what heals us all. And, um, you know, like the Bible says, love conquers a multitude of sin. It is mm -hmm. um, the love that that um, planet gives us. It's an energy from it. And one of the things that we can look at over the last past um, six months, too, is that Venus was in retrograde. And even, and that was in March, she retrograded. Um, even when she went into retrograde, what happened is, is that we thought we were going to get some um, maximum comfort when she came out in, around June 25th. And we didn't. We didn't because um, the other retrogrades began to kick in and Mercury uh, went into retrograde and we had had three, um, three lunar eclipse um, in a uh, three eclipse, I'm going to say, because it may not have been just lunar in um, June. And all of that was cutting things away. That's what eclipse do. They cut stuff away when the sun and the moon meet together. Um, they, they immerse and it cuts stuff out because there's a, a, a joining and a unity. And so then we went through um, that month, you know, and there was not a lot of love felt, you know? Um, and that's my opinion, but you could see it because a lot of people were still dealing with um, um, their uh, perception of COVID and not wanting to be locked down. So I think that a lot of people really made their selves feel a certain way when it comes to, you know, mental health. Um, and um, when you don't expect something to happen, and it does, then you expect, you learn how to make yourself expect the unexpected, right? Hold on one minute. Mm -hmm. And because people don't really, they don't, they don't really change like they say. They're not really adapted to change like they say. This year was a good example of how we are able to adapt to change. So you got mental health issues going on. And then this um, planet Uranus that, you know, we've been discussing since last week um, has been impacting really um after i started reading up more on it since 2008 because it was in the house of aries and um it moved from aries the first house into um the second house in 2018 and so getting back to venus before i start with uranus because you know we already lack love as human beings um her her orbiting in retrograde and the lesser effects of her orbit and the eclipse that went on over the summer and all of the retrogrades did not give us the feeling of love that she would generally give. And I said, that's my opinion, but I can know overall, even with people that I associate with and that I talk with um, and looking at the conditions of the world that love wasn't there the protests um, began to um, take place um, during the time when she uh, went into retrograde and um, that Sagittarius moon came up and there was, um, there was a star that um, created more trouble uh, during that Sagittarius um, full moon um, in June. And so it was one thing after another. Um, and the energies um, of the retrograde was taking people backwards and people were still trying to go forward. And people were still forcing themselves also to go forward dealing with um, a lockdown. They, people were going against the energy, trying to do what they used to do. And it, is, it has caused a lot of confusion. And... It's not just that I'm saying it as I get into um, thinking about it. And good to know that 
you know, Venus is a very um, important planet because it's the only planet that gives love. Jupiter gives optimism, but each and every planet has their downside, which means that if she's not functioning in love or if she's warring with um, Aries, then that means that there's no love. And, you know, when you read the story on Venus, the archetype and Aries, what you'll find is, is that she had a husband and um, Aries was her, um, her sad dude. You know, this is mythology, but this is the way that the skies is, is written. And so when you really get to know Aries energy, regardless if it is a male or a female that inhabits it, one of the natures of Aries when it can't do what it wants to do is anger. Um, one of the wonderful things about Aries is, is that it gives us energy. Um, it gives us the motivation and the willpower. So then if he gets angry, he becomes aggressive and he, it's, you lose your temper with him. So he has to know how to be disciplined within the body of the individual. That's the energy of, um, of Aries. And so when, when they were in this um, position, um, Aries was in a house I can't remember where it was, but it was getting ready to go retrograde. The effects of the retrograde were not felt during the summer, but um, I believe that they were felt during the pandemic because he was coming out of the first house into the second house, which is the house of um, um, Venus house, by the way, and that's money, material, and um, all, you know, everything material, money, um, want to look good and all of this here. And then also Uranus um, moved over into that house as well. And so Uranus coming over there affected people's money. And we know that the world's, the money was affected, period, because the world is supposedly in a shortage concerning finances. And so when you look at that, you can almost say that you can understand if people were feeling some kind of way. But Uranus in the second house right now is going to be there to 2026. And, you know, one of the reasons why I um, decided to go ahead and start kind of look, looking at him is because until 2026, he's going to be there. But then he's going to move over into Gemini, the third house. And... So if it's in the money house and that kind of thing, then that means that you can see the world being affected by it. If one person is affected financially, it's going to affect many other people. So you got more than one person. And so, you know, Uranus is um, like um, the, the energy that created the heavens and the earth. This is what the study is. It's like the God of all gods um, within the Greek mythology. And, you know, when I put it together, um, I see Uranus in the Bible as the water um, of life um, because it's the water bearer. And so anything that has to do with the outpouring of water is Uranus. And then, you know, if you want to go further into the scripture, which I would like to, to make the sense of why you got Greek gods that people um, wrote after constellations and, and they're in the Bible, but it's hidden. So when Jesus um, was leaving, he was preparing um, the people. And, um, but he was preparing the people for a new era. And he had walked through the, new, the old era, which was the Piscean Age. And the Piscean Age um, gives people delusions and illusions. It's important to understand and notice here, right here, because we're coming out of the Piscean age going into the Aquarian age. And a lot of people, um, I said last week, I believe, they thought and they spoke of freedom when we would go to church and that we had salvation, but we were in an illusion because we've not, you know, adopted uh, freedom. 
Um, some people think because they have become free financially that they're free, but then they have heartache and pain. So you're not free. You may have learned how to store up money, but you may not have learned how to store up real love. And um, the whole man consists of mind, body, and soul. And so that means that money is not conducive because it cannot pay for you to get well if you are terminally ill. People that have uh, COVID-19 and that have not survived cannot get health back with money, right? So we know that we can push that one in a corner and say, okay, so Uranus is in the money house. And there's suddenly this happening to people financially. Now that's collectively, but you can think about yourself in that respect and say, you know, what it's doing to you. And it's not that it wants to do it to you. The thing about um, our lack of knowledge is what has put us behind. Because there were people that created the constellations and this guy named Claude, Claude, Claude Ptolemy um, is one of the people that um, was supposed to have been, you know, one that named the Greek um, gods. And then there's the Romans one, but, you know, I'm going to stick to this one right here for now. Because when you look at all of this here, when, when our people, they perish because they lack knowledge, this is the kind of knowledge and education that Black people don't want, but they're the ones that created it. It makes me sick just to sit here and be, be, be in a place that I have to say this. And then we only want to try and figure out how to get money or love in a man. Now, I'm not saying that those things, in a woman, I'm not saying that those things are not important, but that was where we were put in a trick box and confused because we're working for material things and, and everything material, but we're not working for the whole mind, body, and soul. And so when I look at the whole mind, body, and soul, in my opinion, I need to know how to change the plan that they gave me because it ain't working. And uh, in my mind, the only way that I can change the plan is every time I come to a block in row and figure out which way to go again to learn something, it takes me back to the beginning. And the more that a person studied or hungered for um, knowledge to know how to get out of a, a predicament that they put themselves in and their forefathers in and the people that handled them, the more thirsty you get, the more you'll find yourself coming into it. It's not an easy road, but everything leads back to the beginning. And there's a God, you know, the spirit of um, Alpha and Omega. So with Uranus, as I have studied, you know, through, and I, I said I, I fought getting into astrology because of what, you know, um, people in the Piscean age mindset has said. But when I look at Jesus, Jesus was not of the Piscean age uh, mindset. He said, and you shall know the truth and the, the truth shall set you free. Uranus is the energy that sets you free. It's a consciousness that opens up in you and your mind becomes free of the confusion and delusions that the government structures in the Piscean age would give you. They would give it to you because they know, as it is written in the stars, how to work with the energy from heaven to earth. Now, I'm not saying that the Bible is not a lie. Many people have said that. I think that it's a profound thing um, in information that I found, and um, I con continue to seek it because you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When you say free, I feel I know what freedom is, but some people don't because freedom is defined by each and every individual out of their own thought process. Even the dictionary tells you a way to think concerning freedom. My way of thinking of freedom is what Uranus says. You know, sometimes you got to go through disturbance and destruction to get your breakthrough, but you're going to be broke down to get your breakthrough. 
So with Uranus energy coming in, it's the water bearer. Even in the Bible, there was brokenness to get the waters of life, the waters of life to heal you. The apostles became apostles after Jesus told them about the water bearer, but Jesus was on his way to the cross when he said that. 21, 22 of um, Luke, you'll see it, right? But when you just even look at what you know about the Bible, you can see Luke is before Acts. So the apostles were set up, if I could take people out of religion and say, this was a transition into the age that we're going into now, because the Piscean age has lasted over, over, it's been thousands of um, years. But you can feel the energy coming in because the fighting productively is the message. Now, you know, it's a lot of us that felt it, but we didn't, we didn't know how to describe it. We didn't even know how to put it in words because some of us couldn't even, you know, uh, tell people about the fact that we believed that uh, Malcolm X was the dude and people would understand. And, and then other ones was really not. I felt that. I feel that we will become free. But I feel like we have to realize that we must study and not listen to other people and their thoughts about the way life is supposed to be because you got all of these minions all over the world going to work every day. No one is able to sit down and actually think about what they need to think about. They can't even remember because of this structure that we're living in. And some people cannot see beyond themselves, but this is the energy of Uranus, which is Aquarius symbol. It gives you the ability to see into the future. So I am and others are acquainted with it, but we're in a place where I am and others are putting a word on it. And I, I, it's nothing that I could do of myself. I will tell you that there's other people that's been talking about things that came from our inheritance for a long time and they've mastered it. They mastered it. And that's why they have lives of mastery. They knew that in 2010, that this energy was gonna be coming in disrupting. What did it disrupt? It disrupted families and people don't even know it. They think they mad at each other and it's energy that they don't know about. It broke up families because they had no knowledge of what was going on in the heavens. But in your churches, they tell you that to study the stars is uh, witchcraft and is de demonic, it's divination. Well, baby, I wanna be a diviner because there's no other way that we're going to get over other than meeting the liars where they are. You were told not to do everything that could prosper you, not to mention that it belonged to your people. So in Greek mythology, when you look at Greek, it's almost like a, a, a center court of everything. And Uranus is named after a Greek god, Orius, Orinus, Oranus, Oranus, yes. And then they also say that it's Roman in some twist, but we know that Uranus was Saturn's father. Saturn is um, Kronos, and that is a Greek god. So when we look just at the definitions or even the Greek gods um, throughout time, um, what we will find is, is that they're going to take us back into another place. And Manly, I sent, um, you know, a book, um, an audio book out and Manly, if whoever don't have it, then let me know um, after this recording. And I'm just going to put it in an email and I'll do that. But Manly has studied um, all kinds of things because everywhere you look, Manly is there. And he's, um, he was an old researcher. Anyway, I didn't read or listen to all of the book because I had some other things that I wanted to 
um, get, but I know that he studied everything because he, um, you know, had some books on alchemy. Now, when you look at Uranus and you start with the, the energy and the information, and I know that it could be overwhelming for some people, but it's better to be overwhelmed with information that you can use than overwhelmed uh, with information that is not useful. So if you looked at Uranus right now in your chart, you know, you'll look at where it is in your chart and then begin to find out what it's doing in that chart to know what's happening for you. Like it is in my second house. And when I started paying attention to that, then I started making sure that I'm kind of like not overspending, um, saving more. And that's um, a note for everybody right now. Because even with some people that have made a security in their finances, without knowing this, they could be overspending and they can get wiped out because this is a sudden type of energy. Um, I told Kamoy, you know, um, I seen, um, oh, I, I said it in the video last week. I mean, she wasn't on, but I seen that tower crashing as a symbol of this energy. And it's not that it's a bad energy, it's a wake up call, which is what you know Uranus does. So this year has been part in the beginning of the great awakening. And that great awakening was spoken of concerning the apostles. Because when they were told to go to the upper room and begin to pray, that's what they were supposed to do. I think that a lot of people didn't look at the apostles in that energy of Uranus because no one really knows, right? Because we ain't taught this in church. But when you look at Jesus, you don't see him doing traditional things. This has to be understood. He was not in a church. That's traditional. That's Pisces. That's religion. Pisces is in one house that does traditional religious stuff. And then Uranus is next to it, or Aquarius. And Aquarius don't do what Uranus does. Because after the um, disciples was trained, they were sent out alone. Why were they sent out alone? Because they had to learn how to work the work on their own. Because see, you got to globalize, so to speak. And so after that, you see that they came back and they would talk with him, right? But at the end of all of the training, there was um, the thing that was said to go to the upper room and pray until the spirit, you know, comes, until the move of God comes and acts. And... I don't really think that that's understood because they were told to go into the upper room, which was in the spirit. And everybody tries to separate the spirit from astrology. Spirit is in the upper room of the man, the woman, the body, because God is within us. Therefore, with God being in us, we must become acquainted with the energy in order to navigate through life properly. And people will say, well, you know, you know, what is this? How do you do that? And if a lot of teachers had told us when we were in the churches this, because there are some that were teaching and there is the others that were teaching this. Healing was something that we did. And so we have Reiki healing and this kind of thing, which is very applicable to the anointing. The anointing was not kept for one person, even when they went to the upper room, because the upper room was an establishment of them becoming free to know their truth. Now, some of these things, okay, some of these things of knowing the truth is not 
according to the truth that you were given and the truth that you believe. It's the truth that God would give us. Because all of us have studied the Bible and we have not become rich. But we have become rich with knowledge and wisdom that really when you put all of this together, people will pay for it. Because we paid for it. I know I did. The things that I know did not come easy to me. Even when I go and I'm around people and I am despised or people are jealous of me for it, you could, you could go through this and get it too. You know what I'm saying? It take a lot of studying. It take a lot of ridiculing and losses of things to, to get this. And so um, I, I don't feel that I'm privileged. I feel like I worked with what I got and I made it happen concerning wisdom and knowledge. Why? Because there was people that I see suffering. It's not that I'm a martyr, but I do believe that there's an answer to our prayers if we listen. I do believe that there's an answer for us if we learn to take our head out of people's equation of what life is supposed to be. So Uranus is an energy of freedom. Even um, when you look at the Greeks and you study, what you'll find is Paul talking about Athens, Greece, Thessalonia. You can go on further from there and find more. Now, Paul could say what he wanted to about them being pagan gods and they had all of that kind of stuff over there, right? But you don't want to just listen to what Paul said. You want to study for yourself. Because the reason why you can get free is because Jesus says you will know the truth. That means that he will speak to you. The Christ in you will speak to you and show you the truth. Now, one of the things about Greece, when I said it's a center, is that Greek people had very thick hair. Um, they had to come out of an area that could be close to Egypt, I want to say that. But even when I listened to Manly, because I do believe that there was lies told about Egypt, he said that the Greek got their information from e Egyptians. All right, so that's something to study because whenever you start getting truths and you putting stuff together, you want to make sure it's connected. So in the Bible, I connected that they went to Athens. Now, at the Council of Nice Nicaea, three, I think it's 325 AD. I'm trying Augusta, no. I gotta remember his name. Anyway, I come back to it. It was one of the, the Roman emperors. And um I think it was was it Caesar Augustus? Anyway, it was one of them, but he didn't believe in Christ. And then one day, you know, he was drunk, he ro he woke up and he believed in Christ. And so all of this here stuff came about and started the writing. And that was after or during, um, it, it, I think it was during Paul's time, but my point is, is that people conspire to bring something together so that it can fit their thought process, which is what all of the generations before have done. Because here you got in the skies, Greek gods, and then you got Roman gods as well. So then, the man like man is going to go into all areas and say, who, who wrote it? Who, who created them? You know what I'm saying? And who, who said that it was all right for them to be named that? Do you understand? There is a dog star, which um, relates to Egypt, but it ain't enough Egyptian stuff up there. Anyway, 
serious, it has a lot to do with Egypt. It's just not enough. However, whenever you go in and you start um, researching, one country of people is going to lead you to another because you're going to find the conquest. And Manley said that they got their information from, um, from Egypt. So when they started, you know, and I brought up the Socratic teaching, because it's very important, because all of this is linked to the Aquarian age. Socratic teaching was not done in a temple. Socrates taught in the streets. When you read the parables, and I taught this to them when I was doing um, Talana and Anorna when I was doing Bible study, they were, um, Jesus used Socratic um, type of teaching because he never gave an answer. And I brought this up last week. So what has happened to our people? And in order for Uranus to really give us the full effects of what it can do to make a change in the world, what are we going to do to change? That's why it's important to give information. You don't just need to know that it is the, you know, the ruler of technology, of um, innovative um, information that people haven't thought of, that geniuses usually come up with this information. Um, you, you don't need to know just that you, or that it can cause, you know, breakdowns in your life. You don't need to know just that. You need to know where it came from, where it began, who signed it up, gave it the name, because all of it resonates with something that will give you an epiphany moment. Like if you didn't study, you would never know that they called it the God of the universe. Chaos. And, you know, it very well fits when you look at the first, um, the first chapter of Genesis, because that's what was happening, chaos. And then the alignment came because that energy spoke light, right? So let me, let me look at this here question. So Nyla says, how would you address saving or lack thereof? if some are preparing for famine and purchasing items for potential power outages, personal defense, home security, et cetera, there must a connection between Athens, Greece, Augusta with Georgia. Right, yep. So um, to, to save, I mean, I feel like you, you can save, right? You can put, and I don't feel like there is a, um, per se an emergency. I do feel like there's some things that, you know, we we need to have, such as um the uh little motor um outage thing and you know food that you can open without having to use the um stove. Um you you know you you have to do it in the moderation of what you can do for now. Um I believe that there's nothing new under the sun and that we're not late in the game. I think that we're on time. You know, I worked with a lot of people in the last 10 years where we were practicing giving. Um, I feel like something that I, I, I would say is that our communities coming together because that's what Uranus is about as well communities, because this is an energy that is not about political leaders. That's why the shakeup is going on as well. And when I say that, it's very important for people to really try and understand what political leaders have done and why, because they're the ones that even named this energy after what they wanted it to be. I mean, that's just, you know, it's not that I'm fond of the Greek gods, the reason why I have been studying them is because they're the ones that I've been seeing. So if, if, if I'm seeing them, maybe I'm seeing them over the years because that might be a part of what I need to give the people to give them an understanding of what's going on, right? It's not just for me to see them. Yes. So 
And, you know, I, I don't want to be like if, if any of them around me and, you know, that kind of thing, you know, I just want y'all to bless us right now in the name of Jesus. Zeus, come on and do it right now. And y'all can start saying Handarabu Shande, whatever, you know, and, and that kind of thing. But it's not just by chance that you see something. And that's why it's important for um, people to pay more attention to their selves and visions and dreams because if you've been seeing something or things over a period of time, it may not make, make sense today, but if you keep writing it down, mm -hmm. you may be able to put it together and it says something to you because God, goddess, is not trying to tell me and you what to tell you and me. In this time, which is what we were prepared for, but the stigma came in with people that did not appropriately train for the Aquarian age as Jesus did to send them out one by one. That's where the problem came in. You know, everyone was getting a vision of a church. They building churches and the churches didn't do what they were supposed to, because the church says in Malachi to bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be meat. Who is the meat for the church? Is it for the pastor or for the people? So that's, you know, something for us to think about because yes the poor will always be with us but even in freedom as jesus taught he was out there giving to the poor right yes yes even buddha gave up his kingdom to help the poor he he felt some kind of way when he seen the people out there what kind of political leaders do you have that see what's going on in America, but they don't do nothing about it. Now, that's not a question for me to ask you to answer to me, but it's for, for you to think about. Because when your dollar that you spend says, we the people for the people, who in the hell is we? Because you ain't did a damn thing for us. But gave us the ability to stay enslaved and if by chance we make a little money, we might make it over. Now, some, some people have, right? But I just want you to work with me because I believe in the word of God so profoundly that it became a tool that has went from one level to another level with me being able to teach in this magnitude. This is not something that I just want to teach. I want it to become a living reality that would free people. Because in Deuteronomy, if it says, I've given you the power to obtain wealth, well, what does that mean? And after you say it for a while, it will begin to resonate in your consciousness because you won't hear or see anything else but the wealth. And the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And then you got to find out who is the just. And I don't really believe that is somebody, a just person is somebody that does things the right way. But then we have people that are propagating being just that have robbed the poor. But you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Christian folks, right? And I'm not taking away um, the name of Christ or putting um, vanity in it. I'm just, I want, you know, I want to be cynical for a reason. Because if we got enough people together and we believe that even if we, you know, got together and began to sew in a club, then that helps other people. Here it is, you know, uh, Talana and Honora on what we did for 10 years, small number of three people. Nevada and California, giving and giving, serving food. And that will be another story. But we were doing something that God had given me a vision for, and they, they came into it. Jasmine has helped as well, you know. Um, 
it's not something I've talked about because we're going into a new era. It's not that it's not going to continue, but it is a new area. I mean, era appropriating all of those things together. You know, that's why with um, the groups, you know, this stuff that um, that I've I've been shown to do is not because of me. I would just as well be like other people. But then where would my freedom be if I didn't do it? You see, I would be bound. I would have no freedom if I didn't do it and if I didn't motivate other people to do uh, things that would get people free. Because we've been living in an energy of illusions, Pisces age, that Jesus was put into. And I said last week, if astrology is so bad, then why do Christians have the fish on their cars? which represents the Piscean age. You know, when you go in and you're talking about the water bearer, they can um, understand it. But they haven't put the water bearer with the um, signature in the sky. And so if you don't put that together, then how do you bind heaven and earth and release the blessings from heaven into the earth? You don't know nothing about it. I said that last week, but it's important. And so the um, the Aztecs, you know, they, um, and yeah, the Aztecs and uh, what's their names over there in Mexico? They had their little telescope or the way they looked up in the stars and, you know, they created the math system. And, you know, we, we have to look at these things because it will, it will give us an idea of, what was going on back then to keep propelling um, knowledge and wisdom. I mean, you got knowledge and wisdom. It's not that you lack it. None of us. One of the key things is that we don't sit down in this energy to receive it the way that we should have because we weren't taught. You know, that we were taught spiritually to keep going and live by faith, right? And it's nothing new under the sun and nothing changes. It's just that ignorance has been a part of our lifestyle. And so when you start waking up in the great awakening, and also when you go through breakings, you start waking up, you got to have an understanding that you can't keep moving and running around and expect to hear from God. All that blocked up energy right now that's being released from us, pain, suffering, people crying, which has been going on for some time. It's not new, but it's becoming more apparent. It's energy that's been stored up where we haven't sat down to release. And this energy that we're working with now, it ain't, it's no joke. Just that one planet, because it's the biggest and the most forceful. It actually majors over two other planets. And it works in conjunction with Saturn. So it is um, a big planet. It is actually, um, from the studying, the leader of all, because Zeus is um, Uranus' grandson. Kronos is its uh, son. And, you know, to get familiar with them in their own personalities is the way that you actually begin to understand them. So wherever you have Uranus in your chart um, is where it will affect you. And some of the uh, effects are anxiety because you don't know what's happening. And that same energy with Aries in the second house, because they traveling together, is magnifying anger, which is what is causing people to be driven. And that's a, you know, that's a historic uh, promise. It is a promise that people would be free, even in Acts 7. You know, people that had been in slavery for over 300 and some years would be free. And so this planet is bringing that energy in of freedom. Um, it, it does give people, um, what do they call it, the feeling of um, midlife crisis uh, because the energy is so profound with Aries 
that you'll be running like you're running on um, some kind of amped up fuel that you ain't never heard be had before. That means that you can't catch up with your mind. You know, it's on overdrive. So that means that the mind can be going somewhere and the body is just following it. And that's not the way that uh, life goes. The body and the mind must function in, in totality and it functions from the heart. So Uranus, um, it destroys and it helps people to find where they're supposed to be in life. And so if it takes you out of one element and you find yourself in another, you or you, if you see yourself um, going through that, um, you might want to kind of like come into agreement with it. Because if you don't, then that means that we're fighting against the power of God. And you have to realize if you've been fighting against the power of God to stay in the power of would be. Mayans, okay. Lack of understanding, step and repeat Mayans, yes. Through our experience and wisdom gain. So, um, Honora and Naila are making notes here, and this is good. So, um, making um, the connection with the Bible for me is profound because, <laughs> you know, if somebody tells you that you cannot study something because it's the devil, I, I just have to say I never believed it. I went along with it and I struggled with it. But I found that even when people don't understand what's going on, I found that I can pinpoint the reason why people are behaving the way that they do. And that makes it better for me. Because then it eliminates all of this demonic activity. And it makes it more of a compelling reason to know that people are being moved by energy that they don't understand, so they're acting out. They're having convulsions. <laughs> I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm joking, but they they acting out. They're acting like ass, as some people would say. they they fighting and they fussing. Here, you see, this is behavior. And yes, behavior is um, something that I want to know about because we have too many people that are dying in prison. That's the 12th house in prison, institutionalized, 12th house energy. See, if you don't know what's going on with your 12th house, then you won't be able to get over into Aquarius, um, the 11th house, to get your freedom, because you're still bound. And that's the wonderful thing. Even though you might hurt, as, you know, as you're unraveling stuff over in the 12th house, dealing with your 12th house, and you start being free, you find that you broke some karmic cycles or God has done it through you, and now you're free to go over here. You know, you've been doing it even though you didn't know. Get it. You've been doing this and you didn't know, but I'm telling you that I would study this here information. I believe I was sent to do it because mental health is prevalent in my family, or mental illness, but it's also been prevalent for Black people in slavery. A lot of people don't look at the DNA and the fact that our DNA is not just registering um, sickness and disease. They don't see that throughout years, our generations, when you talk about curses, you've got to unbind the ties of homelessness. The mental institutionalization of being homeless, lacking money. It's a delusion that has to be broke through. And if people don't pay attention to that, then how can you get the money? People that make money every day is becoming broke every day. You got it, but you didn't know how to honor people with it. And you know, I'm not even jugging at nobody because one of the things that I know is that I have wisdom and it takes a long way. It takes you a long way. People will pay for your knowledge. People are going to be paying people to talk to them more and more because the entrapments 
of the enemy, the 12th house. Oh, you know, we've been taught, oh, you know, the devil, this and the devil is us. The Ruha spirit goes out every night when we're angry with someone. That's our power. And if it goes out and it's angry, why the Bible says to forgive people before you go to bed? Forgive me, Lord, for not even forgiving. Sometimes when I went to bed, I will not lie. But the demons, they are parts of our energy. Well, we got some heavenly stuff going on up there, but I want us to become responsible for what we got going on here first. People are, you know, they blame and they're talking about what somebody did. And I want you to get your just doing. You didn't hurt somebody. I really do. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because I want you to get into a space, every woman, every man that all of us are in right now, not so that we can fight, but so that we can be brothers and sisters in love. I remember what it's like to get my behind toe up, tossed to and fro. But the thing about it is, is every time I've went through something, it's made a difference in who I am because I intend not to be bitter. I don't wanna be bound and institutionalized in my mind. I don't want to be fake over here in the 12th house and people think I'm okay and I'm hurting like hell inside. No, I want you to know I'm hurting. I want you to talk to me. I want you to pray for me because I've done that for you and I will do it. That's freedom. See, when you got to be ashamed of what you're going through, that's imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Your insecurities, your lack of belief in yourself, and we all have them, your doubt. Your ability not to speak. You ain't got to fight with people about nothing. This is 12th house entrapment. God has given us the power to tread down the lion, adder, and serpent. We become enemies um, to one another. Please. Listen, I don't want to fight with nobody. Because I, I don't really like conflict. And you know why? Because I know myself. So what I will do is try to keep myself at peace and I will avoid conflict because I have a temper like anybody else. But does anybody else think about that? Just feel what I'm saying. Because even with this energy of Uranus, you, you walking around and you saying, don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. And it's because there's so many people out there that's so moody, emotional, triggered by everything. They ain't working on nothing. And you got to walk on eggs and shells to keep them from flying off the handle because they don't want to study nothing. Now, I ain't saying that we have not, I'm not saying we become perfected, but hear what I'm saying. If everyone actually believed in something other than they self, Uranus wouldn't trip you up. You wouldn't have to be mad at nobody else because you would understand the stars in the heaven as they move because it's possible. I'm going to tell you, the others, they, they study it. They study it every day so they don't know what is happening from year to year so that they don't get caught up and lose marriages. I listen to them. You know why? I want to know why they have the information that we created. Behaviors. Why we behave the way we do. I have, over time, worked with people. And I do see the energy of Uranus, but I have also seen the other planet's energy when it is not disciplined in people. But most of all, I've seen it in myself. You see, when I talk about the 12th house, it's not that I'm telling you about the 12th house according to somebody else. It's according to my sign in my life. And when a prophet said, you need to work on self-undoing, that's all he said. 
and somebody else would you know that i didn't work with or you know prophesied to or whatever they would say is that it well you know what that one word stood out and it made me research and really look and stay with it until i found the answer what the hell is self undoing connected to the house the 12th house and then after you, you know, after you practice um, reading it so much, what happens is, is that you become fluid with, oh, wow, okay, so that means that I've been mentally in bondage. Oh, shit, that's, that's the house of domestic violence and abuse. That's another, you know, mm -hmm. mental bondage. Because you can be walking around every day and working every day, but um, you're in bondage. A lot of people that's been to prison, they tell you that their freedom was in their mind, so they had something they learned there to be free where they weren't free in their body. Their mind was free. Something to think about. But the, the 12th house is, you know, it's a preparation because the Bible is telling you, coded, what's going to happen. And if you believe it, then you can be it. Now, when you really study it, you start feeling it. And some people have felt the freedom that they want where they don't want to be bothered with certain type of energy anymore. Meaning, if you've been working with self-serving people, you don't want to be around them anymore. And that's not to put a label on anybody because what I believe is, is that a lot of people do not understand that just because you come into a space when you see and you hear from the spirit realm, you, you is not, you're not aw awakened. You, you're not there yet because you wouldn't be living if you was complete. And, you know, I, I really get upset with people because you see, you hear, and you think. You think that you, you know more than other people. And I don't think that I'm just aggressive with what I believe in. I believe that if you got something to tell me, I can listen and I'm going to be looking to know that it's coming forth or that, you know, I need to be uh, aware and warned. You see what I'm saying? But I, I feel like it's some young people that's coming up seeing and they just believe they believe they're the end, the, the end to all means with this. And they're not. Because I've been seeing since I was a little girl. And I've been getting my ass whooped, too. How about that? So you put, excuse me, people, ass whooping spiritually from, with, with, with the fact of the matter that you see, and you're going to be confused. Because here, you got all of this here lingo talking about you a child of God and you were sent to serve and you was chosen to teach. But you're going through hell. And then other people are saying that um, because they see something they've been seeing for about a year, they feel like they're great. Wait on it. Wait on it. You better get yourself rooted in God because it is a cost for what you're seeing. And anybody that's really seeing spiritually, they're going to go through I hope nobody is offended, but I'm telling you the truth that you will not get in the church. Freedom to know that when you are walking in spirituality, you're in between two worlds. And that means that the world that you choose <laughs> has got to be the one of truth. They say you can't straddle the fence. So every time, you're going to have to choose God, goddess. And that can be confusing. And it can be hard to come back to a space of understanding where you're really at at times. So your practice in this area with energy um, is necessary but it's a profound thing that can bring you to higher depths in life because to know the piscean age and know that you're coming into the aquarian age is to know that you're coming into an age of freedom now just because you're coming into that does not mean you're going to be free 
because you can be in a climate of something that's going on but not be aware of it. And that's what's happening to a lot of people right now. You, you have to tell your, you know, your brothers and sisters. You got to let them know that even though people are saying we need to vote, you need to study why you need to vote. Because now you can see that possibly you have adapted to something that they brainwashed you to. Now, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there because <laughs> we can go into more. And the way that you become free is to scrutinize things. Why? Well, I do because my mind suggests to me, Socratically, really, is that the way? And I'm like, well, that's what they said. Did you study to find it out? Did you ask anybody else? No, I didn't. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Anybody else have experiences like that? Yes, I. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Now, I, I'm not saying that <laughs> it's right and it's wrong, but I brought up this energy of Uranus and it is an energy that comes from the Greek God. It is a superior God, but under that energy is the philosophers. So when I said philosophy to someone, they said that um, it was it was, it was the devil or something too. But when you go back and you look at these um, communities or um, countries, um, cultures, they created philosophies. And this philosophy did not have, uh, it didn't have a, um, per se training model that they thought for people. That's, that's a powerful thing. They made people think. And that's what we have to get back to. And that's what this age is about. That's what the energy of freedom, if you felt like you wanna be free and you just feel like you can't get free. And I ain't talking about, you know, throw away your husband, your wife, or um, your children, I'm saying, you might feel to throw away things and people and it's you that need to get loose from some inner conflict. Once you get free inside, then the freedom will resonate outside. So the philosophy is that of Socrates, you know? And um, that was one of the things that really started drawing me in when I was little because I kept hearing something say, know thyself know thyself. I would hear it and I was young, you know, seven years old, know thyself. And it's like, okay. And then I, I, I went in a store one day and I actually seen it. And I was like, that's real. And you know, that'll blow your mind. So I was like, you know, excited. I was like, I heard that before. And, um, so it would resonate as time went on and I would begin to, um, I think, look at things philosophically, even though during a part of my life, I think it's important for you guys to hear this. During a part of my life, I don't feel like I wanted to rise up to the expectation of my higher spirit. I didn't want to rise up, I don't believe. And um, to look at that back then and to know that I was hearing those um, Socratic thoughts, right? And it was a word as Socrates or Aristotle. They never found out who actually penned it. It says to me that I was called into a higher level of thinking consciousness anyway but I know that I didn't want to do it. I know that there was a force of struggle that didn't want me to be uh, released into it because I remember the struggle. 
in my life getting there, even accepting it. Like right now, some of the things that, you know, my family is going through, the solace that I have is getting on to teach. It, it makes me feel better. And so that's who I am. All right, any questions? Because I'm going to um, close out. <clears throat> None for me. Okay. Uranus? No. Uranus. Mm -hmm. Nobody has any questions? No, I, so no far, questions I for me. You do? Okay. I'm going to send a video to everybody. So, you know, think about and look it up. Because um, really think about wh what I, I just said about how I was holding myself back as a um, young person. I also did throughout my life, I could see, because I made every effort to do other things rather than to be who I was. And so at this point in time, it's coming forth. And when I say every effort to be other, I mean having getting married, having children. I don't, you know, deny them, but some of some of us you know we could think other than what we see life being the you know the way that they shaped it to us mm -hmm. uh, we may not be poor if we begin to talk to um our generations about that mm -hmm. uh it's a lot of things that we have acquired that we don't have to actually be anymore uh, because we got people that actually are telling us that uh, many of our families started at a early age unprepared um, we don't know how to budget money you know uh, everything that we have problems with we need to go back and research and learn how to send people to uh, the knowing of it everything and that's where we will begin to you know change things because even when you're you know now I don't want to take this away from people but when we buy property it, it doesn't belong to us that's right <laughs> and not a shame mm -hmm. and especially where you live at mm -hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> the queen them got that and so um the pope owns um most of the land here you know if they mm -hmm. haven't made any changes but you know i i taught you know, them that in the Bible study. And, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, what does that have to do with anything? Because when you know better, you do better. Okay, you might, you might say, well, it's worth it for you not to, um, or to go on and buy a house and just sell it right away. When the, um, you know, the equity or whatever is up in it, you know, mm -hmm. you might look at that and that's making money. <clears throat> and um, other ways that you make money, you might look at, you know, how you can put your money into um, stocks and pull it out. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying go and invest <laughs> in stocks, but there's a lot of things that we feel like, first of all, we don't do. We don't have wheels. Um, and we don't have a vision for tomorrow or for the future. Um, and this is collectively. Um, and then we'll go to our churches and, um, you know, we went through uh, the time where we could speak name it and claim it but you know i brought that up and i said has anybody noticed that that don't work no more it did work <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so we was in an era when it worked right so you yeah. can know that the energy was changing and even the the consciousness and the collective of what we're going through now you can see the clashing of energy and why things are not working out or they don't feel as harmonious. And so that means that people are not getting breakthroughs because it's like the clash of energy. You got clashing of energy with people receiving downloads because <laughs> they won't sit down and you know, they don't listen or they're not, um, they don't, they don't believe like be still and know. You really mm -hmm. can't hear the still small voice when you be still and know. And um, it's not that I'm saying that I've never been in that position, but be still and know. What, what do you know? 
know something other than what you know already, but know that you're listening for the, the still small voice. And it's always going to be a challenge to do something different than what you did. You're never going to be in a, in a place where you are exercising the abilities that you know already. That's why when, whenever I'm teaching, I might seem fickle, but I will trip right on over to another subject if, if I'm told to. You know why? Because yes. yes. progress, it, it ain't going to wait on nobody. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. Because sometimes I think I'm fickle. But I got to keep up with the spirit because here when I'm and I'm, it's, you know, it's not me doing this p- to make anybody do anything different. I see us being led back to the beginning because I was over here studying the Bible when I first came into um, all of this here. Right. And I didn't went back to Greek and Egypt. But why did I do it? Because all of the information that I get from the Bible is taking me there. The Bible has even given me, you know, information to travel back in time concerning how money started. Mm -hmm. And it's important to get that to the people. It ain't no, how do you do it? And this and that, it's a lot of people down through the line that, you know, they don't even know about trading, you know, trading embargo and trading embargo is still going on, but they use money for it. Back then, it was trade, the Bible. Okay, and then if Egypt was so bad, as I said last week, let's talk about why Jacob and all of them was in Egypt. Mm. But they said they had to cross out of Egypt to go into the promised land. It seemed like they promise was better because they had all that land over there that wasn't developed. And then they also had gold and silver. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I just kind of like think about it and say, you know, people kind of make it what they want because they had us traveling up into a time of capitalism. Taxes. Because, uh, you know, I didn't, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, you, this is where you begin to think. This is Socratic thinking. And it's, this is how God has always had me questioning. Well, did, mm-hmm. did they have taxes back in um, Jacob and Abraham's time? Did they and on, on land, yeah, and on land that's not even there, right? But okay, you you feel what I'm saying? If you got yeah. got a thought process that's taking you into a place where you have to be, not just you got to be uh, objective, and and then you got to reflect because it's like I, I don't know, and then you start thinking it's like. And then you go and study it, you know, it's something and you find that they didn't. And it's like, you lured me into that and you get used to that. And it's like, you get hungry because you know you're being led to something. It's different from you being led of yourself. Mm-hmm. So a lot that. of the, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I know that feeling. So a lot of the things, yes. So the, a lot of the things that we have allowed ourselves to believe in what they fed us is really not the truth that sets you free, like Jesus is saying. When you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And, you know, it, it's not always going to be a collective truth. It, the truth is not going to come to everyone. It's going to be a very few to get it. Because collective it's just like we see out there right now. They don't want to believe in anything other than what um, the majority has told them. It's good to be minorities. It really is because when you're a minority, you can study something and then you can educate your people right there. And then they can come out and become a new uh, people that's actually bringing back a paradigm and shifting a, a paradigm of um, integration. It didn't work. I'm sorry. It did not work for us. We graduated from college. We had more property. We didn't have the bills. We didn't have the family of split ups until we started migrating with um, them. And it's not that I'm saying to be prejudiced. I'm saying that you got to know your own roots to become free. And you can't sell out uh, your own people. You can't be going into your own communities um, shooting and killing and giving them dope and telling them you're going to be free. 
That's bondage. You can't even be like saying that you don't love your brother and sister, your family. You know, and a lot of that happens. I mean, with everyone, but I'm just saying, you know, food for thought. If you don't love your brother and sister, you got problems with everybody, and I've had them. You got to question yourself. That's everyone. But other people, they got to get to the place where they know, I mean, all got to look at themselves because, see, I'm on this here word. You reign us. You reign us. Mm -hmm. I just hear reign. Mm -hmm. You reign, and it's all about us. But if the people can't even go in and look at the word and see linguistics going on in there. They can't get an understanding of this is saying you, but it's going to be the ones that take you. It's you. Or, you know, you can say, yeah, they, you ran us. You did, but you ain't running us no more. So you got some, some stuff going on here because even out of the universe, what you get is, again, the unity of a verse, a spoken word. And everybody that say it together and they pray it together, but everybody that also come together and believe in that same verse, that's where, it, and that's what they did. Y'all, y'all just think that they really did write the Bible. And I mean, you know, that it was all God inspired. Some of it was, but it wasn't, all of it wasn't. Because there's pieces of the Bible everywhere. That, that's confusing to people because then they'd be like, well, then is God real? Well, do you breathe? Like Superman said, do you bleed? Mm -hmm. So I hope that this helps um, to get the wheel spinning because that's all it's about. And if your wheel starts spinning, then you see, you hear, and you believe from God, what you're going to do is work more at humanitarian efforts, because that's what this energy is about. It's about the people. Yeah. It's about helping people. It's about communities coming together and forging to help each other because those people that people weren't about um, voting for, again, this is my opinion, because I study you need to who created the electoral system? Mm. And if they created it, why would it be just? Mm -hmm. I'm just the devil's advocate. And if you find out that it's legitimate for you, then just educate me on it. And I ain't being cynical. I'm telling you, you already done found things that they ain't did for you. You got a world of people living in the streets. And the ones that's gone, they worrying about voting, don't give a damn about nobody anyway. So let them vote. Let the wheat be where the wheat is and let the tares be where they is and let God come and separate because that's what's happening. So you got some believers and you got some non-believers. The be believers don't really believe in money the way that the government and all of these people over here that's been racking up the money do, right? So they believe in the money. You believe in money, God, and it all. And the separation causes the pain that we're experiencing. Because the separation means that we're being pulled apart even from people that we love because they can't, they can't be meshed with us now. I don't feel like it's a superiorness. I do feel like we got to speak to ourselves and begin to love in this place where we are seers and we're humanitarians and, you know, we give to others and recognize and compliment ourselves for what we do. Not put anybody down for what they don't do. Let them be and let God lead you to where you're supposed to be because the prominent aspect of all of this is the God-driven people. Where are you going? Because you're going to be safe wherever he go, even if it's not at the place or, or to the standard that you think it should be. You know, I, I was listening to or reading about the prophets. And uh, I said, uh, I wrote something on Facebook the other day. 
and it was about the elections because Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and all of them talked about this stuff, Jeremiah. They all talked about this stuff. I won't even talk about, you know, John and his revelations. Yes, I will. I will tell you that in order to receive revelations, you're going to feel the fire of hell. You're going to feel like you're going to hell to receive revelations. Does that make sense? Because John was in a place of destitute. For those people and myself, I speak to us, when we're going through, study and really feel what John was dealing with. He was the heart of Jesus. He was his, his beloved. John went through hell on that island of Patmos. I think that's a Greek island too, by the way. But if we can put ourselves in a place and we can understand that it's only a momentary affliction. I'm not saying it with, um, I'm not saying it pessimistically because it's painful. I mean, I think yesterday or the night before, I just said, man, if I hadn't known, I wouldn't have signed up for it. I'm telling you, God, I just wouldn't have did it because it's just ridiculous what we go through. Do you know how many people are falling away, God? We got to pray for the light workers. Do you know how painful this is? But I'd rather be true to talk about it to God than not. Because you know my heart anyway. John went through hell. And so when you look at all of the prophets, they did too. So when, 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 when there's people that they love to see, you know that God is milking you in when you ain't got your ass whooped yet. I'm telling you. I, I, I look at some of the little babies and I just say, you saw this, you saw that. And I got some <laughs> fantastic seers that I've been around such as Kalana on the line and she's scared to even tell people what she see. And she getting her butt whooped because she won't even prophesy, right? They don't know, right, Talana? You got yourself on mute. But... Yeah, all of that is included. So you can be halfway in and halfway out, and it's still going to work like that for you because, you you know, when you're in that spirit realm, you're warfaring. You wrestle not against principalities, but wicked powers in high places. And, you know, some people don't realize that the wicked powers is their own thoughts mm -hmm. in the high mm -hmm. place of the mind. All of God is in here. When I say that the Greek gods, they are um, numbered in the sky, that is only to get our attention to the sky so that we can get, you know, a, a familiarity with that, but also to come within to see that we are a part of the sky. We didn't come here just through a vagina. We were stars. And if we are stars then that means we should be shining. And that's what it means about the lamp. Now, which star did you come from? You know what I'm saying? And so when you start getting people in that direction, then they know they self. And that's where um, prosperity really reigns. Prosperity is not just in the, um, the increment of or the place that we, we learn from. We have to progress with learning because we're going back home. We don't want to stay here. I mean, just to say we're going back home makes me feel good. We are working to go back home because we came here backwards, breach. We didn't know nothing about our spirituality. So we're working our way back. And this is part of God with us working our way back. God is having, God is having experience through us. And as we, our experiences, part of our soul working out some, some challenges that we may have had in other lives. You know, and, and for people that don't believe in it, that's great. I'm not pressing it on. It's something that I also always believed when I was, you know, a little girl. And why? It, it was there. But then I can put it together with these um, Pegasus was the first one I seen. And know thyself. And I may have been um, in that time and era. Coming back. And this is some of the, the resolution that's, you know, coming and helping me to wake up too. okay? I've given you the sun, the moon, and the stars. And so, you know, when that would come to me, I'd be like, what? 
just dumb as hell. I've given you the sun, the moon, and the stars. I'm like, I don't know what that means. How in the hell I got the sun, the moon, and the stars? And then after time, you start waking up again. And you get it, because you are the sun, the moon, and the stars. I mean, hey, that's what your birth, your birthday is about, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then, right, laugh, let's laugh at me and laugh at the sun, moon, and stars. And then you start looking at, gosh, I got a sun sign, I got a moon sign, and I got an ascendant sign, right? Mm -hmm. And just think if I was, if I was talking about a, uh, Aquarius sun today. Oh, we'll be shining on Aquarius today. <laughs> but listen, this is a dumbed down consciousness. So we are looking at um, a part of, you know, the Greek gods, you know, showing me stuff about themselves over the years. And I'm taking it and I'm saying, okay, let me put it together. And it sounds like it's stuff in the Bible that goes with it. And I find it and I'm like, that's some more stuff to teach. I'm going to really have to keep working at this forever, right? Because now I didn't went from theology to psychology and now astrology. And it makes sense to me. If it makes sense to everybody else, I hope so. Because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to show you out there. Um, I'm, I'm bringing you back to the fact that, yes, we have the sun, the moon, and the stars. But they are part of who we are. And the... Um, universe originated within us we are the universe as a whole and it's within us and that's what meditation is about so your sun your moon and your stars um your sun your moon and your ascendant let's say that is affected by what's going on today and uranus is you know giving shock value to people and they don't know what's happening and so i think that that sums it up very well the reason why we would not listen to people saying that, you know, it's divination because it's too much information in the Bible that if you took a, um, a scripture and um, they had, you know, from the stars and, you know, um, you would revelate with it. You would see for yourself that um, I've given you um, the mysteries. Um, and the, the wise men followed the stars. So anyone that's not wise will not follow the stars. I don't think it's just specific people. I think you can teach wisdom to people. Um, I think that when you can teach th that and they begin to look at it and they say, well, you know, God, how can I change my life with this information? Then what happens is, is that God will begin to work with you on it because, um, you know, what I'm aware of is when I'm looking at my chart now, I was aware that 18 years ago, something traumatic happened. Um, and that was, you know, earlier this year, I was like, gosh, I hope I don't have to go through that again. And um, some of the things look similar, but I, you know, I would say that there are some things that look different. And um, uh, with you and I, when we see these things in our charts, the lightning bolts that come, we can know that we're either being pushed out of something for good or we're pushed out for a lesson. So how you sow in life is how um, you're going to increase. And, you know, for families that will accept this teaching with Uranus being as powerful as it is, um, you have no idea when it's coming. It, it affects the, um, the rain, the storms that we have, it affects all of that because it's like lightning. And um, it just comes out of nowhere, surprises. Good and, you know, not, you know, not so good, but the not so good is surprises that generally will bring you into a um, heightened perspective in life. So that's the way I've learned to look at it. And um, uh, yeah, I think that's it, so, all right. I send this tape over to you guys, and so thank you. And we'll see what's coming up for next week, Wednesday. Thank I you. think we still got some more to go, though. Okay. All right. Thank you. Too. Thank, you. Right. thank you, Miss Kim. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Kim.
You guys have a good night. Thank you, Anora and Carolyn. You too.